Excellency. Your Excellency, Mr. President, um, Honorable Ministers, Ambassadors, esteemed gathered guests. First, let me express my warm gratitude to Mr. President for inviting here to Kenya, to Nairobi, for his invitation to pay this historic visit. This is the first visit by the President of Poland to Kenya after 61 years since the establishment of diplomatic relations between our countries. Hence, this is a crucially important moment, and to me personally, it is a huge honor. Once again, Mr. President, I would like to say thank you on my behalf, on behalf of my wife and all the members of the Polish delegation. But I am happy, Mr. President, also because this is not just a, a visit of courtesy. This is a visit which brings with it a big potential of economic cooperation for the future. I firmly believe in this for both our countries. We talked with Mr. President today. We had the tete-a-tete -tete meeting and then we had a, a bilateral meeting with our delegations. During those meetings we discussed our economic relations, we discussed the future directions of developing these relations and the perspectives which exist in this respect between our two countries. So let me stress very strongly that back in October 2023, there was an economic forum here, held here in Nairobi between Poland and Kenya, which brought together a lot of persons interested uh, in cooperating, entrepreneurs. Uh, this forum was co-organized by our Polish uh, Trade and Investment Agency. And today, together with Mr. President, we will attend another edition of a business forum meeting some people call it a round table or a business round table. And there, our entrepreneurs, under the patronage of presidents, will discuss the possibilities of cooperation and de developing relations. Speaking about the sectors, there are at least a few of them. Uh, just a moment ago, we witnessed the signing of very important memoranda. Uh, shaping future cooperation, among others, in the field of agriculture and rural development. Today we discussed, uh, together with Mr. President, at length uh, the milk industry, uh, the production of milk, the potential development possibilities here. I presented to His Excellency the situation on our milk market and our uh, milk production capacities in Poland also uh, milk processing, I shared our experiences. I said that Poland is one of the world's biggest producers and exporters of, among others, uh, powder milk. So having said that, we um, are able to share our vast expertise and experiences. We have those experiences uh, spanning uh, tens of years, dozens of years in terms of modern milk production. <coughs> but we also discuss cooperation in other sectors of the agriculture. We also uh, touched upon cooperation in the sector of modern technologies, uh, environment protection. We also discussed uh, various forms of uh, winning energy from renewable sources, um, be it hydropower plants or be it wind farms or uh, be it uh, solar energy. I. Uh, informed Mr. President about our transition process according to the commitments that we made uh, connected with our presence in the European Union. We are making those commitments uh, in climate protection. We are planning to transform uh, our energy sector. Uh, we plan to develop nuclear energy in Poland. This is an indispensable element necessary for implementing European climate policy in the future. But I also mentioned that uh, we are planning an energy mix in the future with a big share also of renewable energy. These were the topics that we discussed with Mr. President. We also talked about geothermal energy, 
I gave an account to Mr. President um, of an investment which we have in Poland right now in the Podhale region in the south. Uh, there, uh, the deepest uh, drill uh, well is being carried out. Our engineers, our geologists uh, are exploring and searching at the level of even 7,000 meters. They are searching for water with such temperature which will make it possible not only to uh, power households and utility buildings with uh, geothermal energy to provide heating for buildings, to provide hot water, but also, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that a geothermal power plant can be built in Poland. To build such a plant, we need to have the temperature of water exceeding 100 degrees. And we hope that such hot, wa hot water will be found um, to that aim. So I also uh, told Mr. President about those research activities which are going on right now. But apart from that, we also discussed uh, modern tax policy, um, closing gaps in the public finance sector, in the tax sector. That is why the memorandum was signed on um, cooperation on tax solidarity. And we also discussed, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a modern uh, finance sector, uh, banking sector, the so-called fintech, uh, shared our experiences in Poland in the sector of e-banking, which is well developed in our country. It is one of the top levels in Europe, absolutely. So I uh, shared um, all our achievements and experiences that we're able to share on this one. We also discussed, ladies and gentlemen, the development of uh, medical, of the health sector here in Kenya, where Poland right now has a cooperation in this regard. I spoke about our experiences in terms of the construction of the Polish healthcare system. I spoke about the combination. On the one hand, we have got state-owned health service. On the other hand, private health service sector. And I also um, uh, said how this is developing and how general access to health services is being given to the population in Poland. These topics um, here today are an element of uh, uh, contemporary activities and day-to-day activities uh, which we're implementing also in terms of development uh, in Kenya. And uh, these were the topics of our discussion today as well. These are the issues which uh, we will uh, be uh, discussing also tomorrow. Tomorrow I will uh, witness um, the work and the exercises of the uh, local rescue services of firefighters, among others, where Poland is also sharing its experiences and supporting the development of Kenyan services. Uh, so we are active and we are deepening our relations right now. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking about the difficult issues, although not in our relations, but in our neighborhood, we mentioned uh, the unrest in Africa, also in this part of Africa. We mentioned the war situations, um, which uh, Kenya is seeing in its neighborhood. I also informed Mr. President um, on the situation behind our eastern border which results from the Russian aggression against Ukraine. I described the situation today. I uh, also described our efforts, how we are welcoming Ukrainian refugees and how from our close point of view as neighbors, this Russian aggression against Ukraine looks like how dramatic consequences it has. I also described all these things to Mr. President. I also spoke about the impact of Russian aggression on the global food market, on the global energy market. I also spoke about the crisis which uh, hit us one year ago when Russia turned off uh, gas supplies that we are receiving through the Yamal gas pipeline. I also uh, described our diversification efforts and how we managed to deal with that very difficult situation thanks to having an LNG terminal in Świnoujście today, thanks to having gas interconnectors, also thanks to the fact that we have built a new gas pipeline from the Norwegian shelf through Denmark to Poland. All these actions made it possible for us uh, uh, to 
help our energy sector and to rescue our energy sector and uh, the production uh, sector of gas. But we were hit by increases in uh, prices uh, for energy. We had to introduce a special uh, policy in that respect. And uh, these are the things uh, which we also raised during our meeting with Mr. President today. I invited Mr. President to visit Poland. We hope that His Excellency will visit us. We hope that it will give us an opportunity to show also to the farmers and to representatives of the Ministry of Agriculture from Kenya how our uh, agricultural sector works, how it looks like, and also the milk sector, the dairy sector, what it looks like. So today, these were the main topics of our conversation. Uh, there is still a couple of points on our agenda today, especially the most important item on the agenda is the meeting with representatives of the business circles. And we are going to uh, have that meeting soon. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for inviting us. Thank you uh, for the presence also of the ministers um, accompanying Mr. President. I do hope that this visit, which is spectacular, because this is the first visit paid by the Polish president here in Kenya, I hope that it will also be a breakthrough in terms of our further cooperation and in terms of a very strong impulse, the first very strong impulse um, to have economic cooperation also to uh, develop cooperation in science and, and research. But I hope that the second impulse will be the visit by His Excellency Mr. President in Poland, in Warsaw. And right now we are waiting for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellencies. With your permission, we'll now take two questions from members of the press. We'll start with a journalist from Poland, followed by a journalist from Kenya. Remember to identify yourself, the media house you represent, then to your question. Over okay, to thank you. Dzień dobry, Agnieszka Drążki. Uh, Agnieszka Drążkiewicz, Polish Information Radio and Polish Information Agency. Mr. President, you spoke with the Kenyan president about our point of view uh, concerning Russian aggression against Ukraine and also the consequences, the results of that aggression. Did you see an understanding during that conversation, an understanding of the Kenyan leader? And also another question I have to ask, our follow-up question. I would like to ask you about the Friday interview that you gave. Um, many politicians in Poland um, took it very negatively, what you said about the Crimea. How would you comment that, Mr. President? First of all, indeed, uh, we raised that topic, as I have just mentioned uh, in my conversation with Mr. President. I was not really presenting the Polish point of view in terms of the war in Ukraine, in terms of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. What I was doing was presenting to Mr. President and to the ministers uh, how the neighbors are seeing it. In other words, if we look at the closest neighborhood of Ukraine, what the picture of the situation is, which was happening and is still happening. I said that it was, that was a totally unprovoked aggression. I said that Ukraine did not provoke Russia in any way whatsoever. And that indeed, we are seeing a full-scale aggression. I. Uh, said Mr. President that I visited Kiev a few hours literally before the start of the Russian aggression. I went there on the 23rd of February and then it was the last meeting that I had with President Volodymyr Zelensky before the outbreak of the war. And I also described the visits that I paid later after Russians were uh, repelled from the areas around Kiev, from Borodzianka, from Bucha, from Irpin. I also told Mr. President that I was able to see with my own eyes what the Russian aggression caused. I saw destroyed houses, I saw uh, ruined human lives, I was able to see the wreckages of uh, Russian tanks and military vehicles uh, that had been destroyed. I also said, uh, saw the remains of Russian soldiers. So. I describe that war the way it really is, the way it really looks like. Uh, Mr. President also shared with me his experiences in terms of the conflicts uh, which Kenya is seeing around itself in the neighborhood, the unrest in Sudan and in other countries. 
which are going on here as well. Africa, unfortunately, in the last uh, dozens of years, has experienced a whole number of bloody, horrific conflicts and wars. And this problem of the war of aggression, which is uh, connected also with attacking civilian population, is well known here in Africa. And whenever you uh, raise this topic, you don't have to look for an understanding for a long time. Mr. President, uh, knew very well what I was talking about when I was speaking about the destruction of civilian homes, when I was describing uh, the whole villages wiped out in eastern Ukraine, when there is no life today, actually. Uh, everybody was uh, forced to flee or uh, they were killed because this, that is the reality of this war. That is the reality of the Russian aggression uh, against Ukraine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, about my... Friday interview, please consider the convention of that interview. It was not a tense conversation with a politician. It was just an interview which we treated partly, of course, partly as a, a peaceful, calm conversation an official conversation on concerning different topics, not, also not serious topics, but the topic raised by the journalist indeed was very serious. And uh, to a certain extent, I, uh, I was thinking uh, about different discussions that I hear happening in the international arena, but concerning our position on the Russian aggression against Ukraine and concerning the way uh, this war has to come to an end. I, I want to stress the word has to. It, it is the uh, restoration of the primacy of international law. The primacy of international law has to be restored. It means that Ukraine comes back to its internationally recognized borders, to full control over the territories which are internationally recognized territories of Ukraine. Uh, also Crimea, and I want to stress this uh, very strongly, because let us remember that the Russian aggression against Ukraine, which as a matter of fact started in 2014, started, among others, from the occupation of Crimea. And that occupation of Crimea is still going on. Because of that, Russia has to leave the Ukrainian territories which it is occupying. Ukraine has to regain control over all its internationally recognized territories, and such should be the end of this war to make sure that international law is respected as the biggest guarantee of peace for the future. Because this is something I want to stress very robustly. Russia cannot win this war, because if Russia wins this war, then Russia will attack once again. We Poles are saying these words with full responsibility. We know what Russian imperialism is. We experienced it uh, over the last centuries. Uh, a couple of times we were under the Russian occupation, under the Russian partition for 123 years during the uh, Russia of Tsars. Then we were a part of the Russian sphere of influence and we know what Russian imperialism is. Uh, the Russian imperialism is being reborn today. One of its demonstrations is the aggression against Ukraine. It is a clear and unambiguous demonstration. And this Russian imperialism has to be stopped and it has to be reprimanded or scolded. And it will be scolded when Russia is forced to uh, with withdraw from the occupied Ukrainian lands and when uh, Russian war criminals are punished. This is the fundamental question right now and this is my position on this issue. This is my position that I have presented everywhere internationally since the beginning of this conflict. And in this respect, nothing has changed, absolutely nothing. And this is also the position that I was presenting today to Mr. President in our conversation.